The Small Business Show, episode 201, for Wednesday, December 12th, 2018. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is by, for, and about small business owners. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How you doing, man? I'm doing fine. I'm dealing with some technology issues today, but you know, that's kind of that's sort of my life. So I, I think I think I'm okay. I'll make if it. If, yeah, if anybody has to deal with it, it's good for <laughs> it's, you. It might as well be me. That's right. Yeah, right, on, right on. Cool. Hey, I want to jump right in, and uh, we have a guest here waiting in the wings, if you will, and I want to talk about. Uh, uh, this, this, it's an interesting concept. You know, most of us create businesses kind of su to support our lifestyle, but there's some people that live a lifestyle that seems to kind of, you know, lend itself to starting businesses, whether it's to support what they're doing or, you know, uh, pay for trips or do whatever. And, and I, I love the concepts, concept. We're going to talk to Jeff Anderlight today. He's a serial business owner, he's traveled around the world. And it, what it looks like is, and, I, and one of the taglines to his company is to, you know, uh, pursuit of living a non-boring life. And along the way, uh, Jeff has started a hostel in uh, Nicaragua, a spice company, a clothing brand, and of course, a business to help other businesses succeed. So I'm sure you want to hear about the stories. I, I'm, I'm very eager to talk to Jeff. So uh, thanks for joining us today, Jeff. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Cool. How are you guys? Good. We're good, man. Yeah. Oh. We always love talking about this stuff. So awesome. Definitely good. So let's, let's jump right in. Um, you know, I, I, I always read up on everyone and their companies and all this stuff. There's a lot going on with you. <laughs> and so I'm not really, I'm not really yeah. sure where to start. Uh, Typical. Yeah, but that's, that's okay. I, I, uh, I, I can appreciate that. So let, let's talk about your motivation to start your first business and, and what's, is it, or, what is, or if, if there is an underlying theme that's kind of driven you when you've, as you've continued to start other companies and, uh, get to where you are today? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think to start off with, uh, you know, I've been creating things, whether it's a physical product or coming up with ideas since I was young, you know, when I was probably five, six years old, maybe older than that, eight, nine years old, I would take remote control cars apart, get the motors out of them, put them on pencils and attach an eraser and a nine volt battery and create electric erasers. You know? Oh and yeah. I, I, seriously. And I would take uh, paper towel rolls and get the cardboard out of it, go to the hobby shop, get the engines and create my own rockets. You know, so I'd always have uh, the desire to try to create something, figure it out. Um, so that's always an underlying theme of mine. And then also never wanting to work for anybody else. Um, yes. And, you know, financially motivated, you always see the people with the most financial success are the ones that have an interest in a company. Um, so I think all three of those things combined uh, have always been a part of my life and kind of lended itself to me not being a nine to five type of person. Uh, you know, the first company I started in high school with my business partner, Sean, who I've created a few companies with, uh, it's pretty devious really, but we created a thing called the bottle buddy. And it's a thing you can put on the top of a bottle of beer to shotgun a beer out of a bottle. <laughs> priority, <laughs> high school priorities. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. You know, pretty ridiculous. Not the most proud of products, but that's good. We were selling it out of the back of our car and. Uh, Sean was into video games, so he was leveraging video game forums to sell it on, and we created a website, almost got kicked out of school for it, but uh, it gave us a little taste of what it's like to create something and then sell it. And I, I am so curious, I, and so I'm going to ask you this in a specific way. Do you mind telling me what year that was? I, I, I don't necessarily mean to out your age. <laughs> I, I'm 32, Okay, so this is probably 2002. I think 2003. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So we got into a local mall and my mom still has one in a package, which is probably the only one left in existence. But, sure. Uh, you know, when that, that was in the shelf of a store in the mall uh, and people around school 
uh, were using it at parties, it was a pretty good feeling. So I think that it's kind of what solidified my uh, desire to always be an entrepreneur and create things and and start businesses. That's awesome. Oh, that, yeah, that is killer. Uh, I, I love that. And if nothing else, you, you know, you got a great story to tell. You know, <laughs> so we love you. That's why we get together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we talk about it all the time. You know, it's like you, you get a chance to tell your own story and make your own story. You know, why, why would you want it to be, to be boring? You know, make it, make it interesting. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like me and I think Dave, you know, we, we have a lot of stuff going on too, and there's all kinds of businesses, some that do great, some that don't really go anywhere. And, and, you know, one of the things we say and mention on the on the show a lot is not to talk about stuff as much, especially to what I always call, you know, the regular people, the folks that get a check, the non-business owners, because it kind of freaks them out. Mm -hmm. um, and, I and you know, I've had that kind of look. It's like, wow, you're kind of flaky, you know, or whatever, because you've got six different companies going on or whatever. So, well, in your case, you know, what's been the reaction of those kind of people about starting all these different companies, jumping from one idea to the next? And, and taking those risks that usually really scare people uh, that you seem really comfortable with. Yeah. You know, I, like I said, I've been doing weird stuff pretty much my whole life, whether it's uh, starting a hostel, creating a ridiculous drinking apparatus, going to school at university of Alabama from California. So it's been kind of my MO. So I'd say people closest to me are kind of numb to it and just, see it as normal uh you know you'll get like anybody else you'll get people that you don't know so well that are like you know, what are you doing you know you have a mortgage and responsibilities and you have no idea about clothing why are you getting into that but at the end of the day i have to do you know what's going to make me not feel uh completely violated to myself um and I guess the most important thing is the people that matter to me have all been supportive. I have an amazingly supportive wife, my parents, my brother, uh, and they've never said anything uh, but positive reaffirmation to me. So the people who do have those weird reactions don't matter to me. So, you know, it's... It's all good. good. That's a yeah. really smart attitude. I mean, it you know, it's, it's following on to what Shannon was saying before. It, you 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 can't let yourself get dragged down by people that that just aren't willing to see that that there is potential in things like that. And and sometimes there's not potential. Like sometimes they're right, and that's the you know that's the worst because it it gives those those naysayers fuel right like oh right i i said he was gonna fail at that stupid thing and he did fail at that stupid thing yeah but five other stupid things did really well so like that's okay it's it's good to fail at something it, it shows that and you're, you're trying going to right you're, I mean, you are you started businesses you're gonna fail you are yeah, going you, to fail you just keep on going <laughs> that's uh, the thing bullheaded persistence yeah man exactly yep you don't often hear the stories of people hitting a home run on their first try right rarely yeah, yeah. yeah. rarely I want to go back to something you said here a minute ago too. You said that if you didn't do this, you'd feel uh, kind of, you know, violated to yourself. Yeah. Explain that a little bit. Well, it goes back to your first question of my motivation. It's more just a deep seated desire that I have uh, that if I'm not pursuing some entrepreneurial thing or creating something, uh, then I feel like I'm not really being who I want to be. Uh, you know, I, so I sold my hostel, uh, went traveling for eight months in Southeast Asia and came back completely broke. Well, I had to get a nine to five job. Fine. Fair enough. My wife, girlfriend at the time was, uh, pursuing school. She got into Cal Berkeley. She's amazing. You know, she pursued what she needed to do. Then she got a job. And at that point I was like, I was itching so bad. I was like, I can't do this. I will seriously freak out and at that point i realized you know i didn't have much longer to go before i would explode i had to to go for broke no matter what i was trying to create clothing company the ignite 360 marketing suite it didn't matter um but yeah that feeling of if i'm not pursuing my own business ventures then i'm not being true to myself and essentially feeling like i'm violating myself yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and that—that's that's cool. the right. Like, if you don't have that attitude, you probably 
aren't going to stick with it enough to make your business succeed. Like you, you, yeah. you need that go for broke attitude because yeah, because when you do go for broke, if you don't have that attitude, then you'll probably stop. Then you'll stop. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. There are plenty of, of, you know, I call them rip cords, right? You know, there are pr- plenty of escape hatches along the way mm-hmm. uh, that don't necessarily get you to the goal or the financial freedom or the flexibility of your life or any of those other things that, that you're doing it on your own will, but you got to take that road. And yeah, as we... I, I listened to one of your other podcasts and you said that you're living your backup plan. Right. Yeah. You don't have another that's one. Right. Uh, <laughs> and, but that's the truest thing, right? Yep. If, if you do have a backup plan, I wouldn't say this, you know, is a hundred percent of the time, but for the most part, you know, if you have a backup plan, then you're going to use it as a crutch to, to escape when things go bad or yeah. a lot of people could at least. That's right. Yeah. I, I heard it said it a little, a little different way too. I, I was listening to a guy the other day and I, I don't recall his name at the time, but uh, he was saying, you'll never know what you're capable of. And until you put yourself in that position, you know, yeah. because it forces you to, to oh, I have to act, you know, like I can't, no, there's nothing coming in. I got to hustle. Exactly. Uh, so you don't know your limits till you're pushed there. Yeah, you got it. So, uh, you recently sold one of your companies, the Legion of Spice. Um, can you talk about how that how that went for you? Yeah. Uh, well, a little backstory. That was right when I was getting uh, Baja Lama, the Hawaiian shirt company, going, and we were selling or making apps for B level Instagram models and getting Ignite three hundred and sixty going. So we were just, you know, didn't have enough hours in the day. Uh, so basically just kind of stopped operation and we had it on our, our e-commerce was hosted through Shopify. Yeah, sure. So they have a seller's part on the, on the platform. So you can put it up and then all the metrics for your sales are automatically uploaded there. So it's pretty good. That's cool. People, people can go on there, check it out. So we got a few offers, uh, went back and forth with the guy a few times didn't work out and then it, because i just want to get rid of it basically gave it away so it wasn't a big success but again who cares you learn it you i have your spices you know? in my cabinet in my kitchen so <laughs> that's a success in my opinion there's an actual <laughs> container with a good label on it so well and it, it frees your at the very least you no longer have to think about it right it's not yeah, exactly it, it's yep. not a concern anymore i yeah. had to prioritize what i was yep. going after yep for sure. Cool. For sure. Oh, hey, guys, the- actually, Shannon, I'm going to take a second here. Actually, I'm oh, yeah. going to take a, somewhere in the neighborhood of 90 and, and 200 of them. And I want to talk about our first sponsor, which is Text Expander from Smile at textexpander.com slash podcast. If you are running a business where you have pieces of text, pieces of little snippets, right? It could be big pieces of text, big, long email replies that you do every time somebody asks a certain question, or you want to put your address somewhere, or even if you're just filling out web forms and you want to have your email address right, this is what Text Expander is for. You put all that stuff in there, and then Text Expander Let you pull it out, either with a click of a mouse or, even better, with the type of a keystroke. You can assign a short little keystroke to invoke one of these snippets, and boom, all this text comes out that you've previously created, you've honed, you've tweaked, you've perfected it, and now it's right there. In fact, you can even have Text Expander ask you to fill in form fields, so you might have like a boilerplate for something, but you got to fill in stuff like maybe the name of a product or their order number, or maybe you want it to take something from the clipboard and put it in a certain spot in the text. No problem. This is what Text Expander does. And then it gets even better because you can sync all of your Text Expander snippets, not only with all your devices, your Macs, your Windows machines, your iOS devices, the web, all that good stuff. You can also sync with other members of your team. So everybody's got all the right stuff. So you got to check it out because if you're on a team, Text Expander will change your life. In fact, it's going to change your life whether or not you're on a team. I can speak to that. And it leaves you more time to do what you do best. So check it out. Go to textexpander.com slash podcast. And uh, when you check out, it'll ask which podcast. Of course, hopefully you'll uh, 
you know, you'll choose ours from that list that lets them know that this is working. Our thanks to Text Expander and the folks at Smile for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, th- there you awesome. go. Yeah, it is a life changer. It's a it's an incredible app, and if you're a, a solo entrepreneur, especially man, it's a, it's yeah, a killer. It's a kill. Yeah. So thanks for your time on on that. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah of course. Okay, so Jeff, you you mentioned the the Hawaiian shirt company, um, yep, and uh, Baja Lama, and and looking around, you know, doing some research for today's show, looking on the website, I see you know uh, you. It looks like your brother, maybe some you know a bunch of good looking women, wife, girlfriends, or whatever it is on your website. <laughs> And, you know, in the, in the cool places, and it looks like a great way to kind of fund your travels and promote your brand at the same time. It, w- was that kind of the idea, you know, I mean, like kind of like the bottle buddy, you know, we're going to drink a few beers. Was that the idea when you guys got started? Uh, so I wouldn't say I started it uh, for traveling. Well, I guess, you know, to create uh, some profit, which would always pay for me traveling. So I guess if you want to put it that way, then yes. But for instance, where all the photos are on our website, they're from the Mongol rally. So this is this uh, 11,000 mile charity rally where you get the biggest piece of shit car you can find under 72 horsepower and you drive from London to Mongolia. And I found out about that about two years ago and uh, which was six months before the bottle buddy came (laughs) <laughs> uh, as an idea. And so I was always going to do it. And, you know, it was two years, three years after I left the hostel. So I was really itching for a pretty big adventure. Um, so I signed up for that, got my brother signed up and then, uh, Baha Lama started coming to fruition. So as we were getting that going, I'm like, all right, well, let's just name our team. Cause you, you come up with crazy names or you find sponsors for your car. So I was like, all right, well, we're team Baha Lama and this is going to be a perfect way to bring some shirts along and get awesome content for the website, social media. We actually didn't even launch Baja Lama until after I left, but luckily I got a few uh, sample shirts made. Uh, so we brought some sample shirts, drove along, went to some insane places and got good content. So it all worked out perfectly. Um, but yeah, I guess to answer your question, anything I start is to fund my travels really. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. You get right. Why not? Yeah. That's a great. That's a great story. Uh, Okay, so uh, I want to talk for a few minutes about business partners. We, mm-hmm. we talk a lot on the show about them, and I I, I believe you've had a few. Yep. Uh, what What would you say the most important uh, part of uh, you know the most important thing about having a healthy relationship with a business partner is you know wh- what's worked for you and and what hasn't? Uh, yeah, I've had I guess three real significant business partners. One, Sean uh, Kalina. I've been business partners with him since high school. He did the bottle buddy with me all the way till now with uh, Baja Lama. He did uh, Legion of Spice and now Ignite 360 and two other guys. One of them didn't work out at the hostel. That's what ultimately led to the demise of, of my part of it. Um, and so what didn't work out for that, you know, everybody talks about communication, right? It's, that's a common knowledge. You got to have good communication more than that, not being aligned on your ideology and where you foresee everything going. Uh, you know, if that starts to really take a hold, then it's going to creep up and, and ultimately become too big of a thing to, to handle. Um, so making sure that you and your business partner have the same idea of, of where you want to go with things you can have your fights, big deal, everybody does. But but if your ideology and your, your vision of where things are, are going to go, I think that can uh, be too much to handle sometimes. Yeah. Um, Makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's important to learn how to so, suss that out too. Yeah, that's that, that was going to be my comment is yeah. where along the way, you know, if you're like me, you, you start talking about something with somebody and you kind of get rolling and, you know, before you know it, you're married. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. and, then, and then you realize, you know, uh, I mean, do, do you have those conversations about the ideology and stuff beforehand or, uh, you know? How, well, I think you should. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, let's be honest, from ideation of anything from a physical product to a service. By the time you come up with a concept to the time that it launches to three years later, it's going to probably be significantly different. Um, so, 
you know, coming up originally uh, with what your idea is compared to how it ends is not going to be the same. But along the, the transition, communication and, and trying to align yourself along the way, I think, is probably the biggest yeah. thing. That makes sense. That's cool. So since I it's, I know you have a lot going on, how, how do you prioritize, uh, prioritize the, you know, your workload <laughs> each day, you know, managing multiple small businesses at the same time? Um, you know, w- walk us through that a little bit. Yeah, it's something that I'm still trying to work on, honestly. But uh, I'm, going, yeah. <laughs> I'm a big proponent of writing everything down. So I'm, I'm not very good at uh, managing a, a digital calendar. So I have an old school planner huh. uh, for my day-to-day tasks. Overarching, first of all, I look at both companies and I say, all right, what do we want to achieve overall? And then try to break it down into what needs to happen in the next month? What are the steps that need to happen to get to that end goal this month? And then do the same for the other company and then prioritize it by importance and date that it needs to be completed. And then once, you know, that's a list of maybe a hundred things, but once it's all written down, then I can put it in order and say, okay, this week I have 20 things for this company this week, 20 things for this company order of one through 20. And then I can just knock them out one at a time. I have to have it written down. Otherwise uh, I lose focus. I'm a a huge ADD person. So my mind wanders. And if it's not written down and organized, then I might as well forget about it. It it sounds like that, not just having it written down, but the process of writing it down is part of your organizational, like it's part of your weeding down of how to how to do what, you, how to get to where you need to go. It's not just now you have the plan, but you've built the plan through this process that that engages you in a way that you can actually focus and you're using your hands and, and writing and seeing and yeah. all of that. Yep. And a lot of times if I'm not writing it down, then uh, it doesn't happen. Yeah. Or, or to say that, you know, if I have, okay, I, this needs to be done, uh, but you know, it's an end goal that might have 10 steps, but I don't write the 10 steps down. Then finishing that end goal is twice as hard yeah. as it would be if I write all 10 steps down and then I can accomplish all 10 smaller steps to get to that end goal. I always joke. I say I use calculus every day. And and really what I do is I, I, it, I, I the thing that I learned when I took calculus was you take this monstrous problem and you break it down into all the little steps and then you just do the steps. And when you finish all the steps, as long as you do them right, you finish the problem. You know, it's like more manageable. It it, it just happens automatically. Like, yeah. If you break it down into those steps and that's, yeah, man, that's overwhelming. It's oh yeah. It's less overwhelming. overwhelming. That's it. Yes. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. And then it's easier to see what needs priority. Yes. There's 10 steps to finish a problem. Right. But maybe one step's not too important. If, if, or for me, at least if, if they're not written down, I can't identify them and say, all right, well, this is the most important. I try to accomplish the most important task first Yep. or, or maybe even the hardest task. Uh, and the other ones fall into place a lot easier. This is a hard lesson for a lot of people to learn, especially smart people that are used to being able to remember things. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, you think, Oh, right. I know I need to do that. I won't forget that. Of course you're going to forget that. You know, yeah. if you don't write it down, how do you, <laughs> why wouldn't you forget it? You've got other things that you're going to think of. You're thinking all the time. Of course you're going to forget it. You got to write Back it down. Back to your other statement. I think you're right. The physical act of me writing it helps. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I find I'm, I'm ADD like you. And if I, if my hands are involved in something, I have a much easier time focusing on it um, than I do. If I'm just, if I'm just thinking about it or whatever, I, yeah, I'll wander otherwise. Yep. Yeah. Don't I, get know, me wrong. This is something I'm still practicing and trying oh, to get better at. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the club. Believe us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an odd, you let us know when you get it figured out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we can do whatever you're doing. Yeah. Do. I mean, I, I love the writing down too, but the, what doesn't work for me as well is I need it to be, you know, uh, indexed so I can quickly search it and come up. So it's like, uh, I've I tried so many different things, and it can even be now as as simple as like the notes app on my computer because it syncs on across all my devices, and I can search it and check things off and all that kind of stuff. But I love the the analog, uh, you know, way too. 
And, you yeah. know, that might work for me too, but I just probably haven't gotten there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I, like what we all need is a much higher bandwidth interface to our digital devices. Like if it could, if, and of course there's privacy, privacy issues with all of this, but if our devices could capture those thoughts as we had them, then we wouldn't have to worry about writing it down. And then we could look at this list of things that we created without actually creating anything, you know, um, and, but that's, yeah. you know, I guess that's what, uh, what Elon Musk's, what's that Neuralink company Neural, is, yeah. is working on in <laughs> some way, that. shape or form. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, like for me, uh, the, the reminders app <laughs> on my Mac or on my phone, I mean, I, I'm constantly all day long, you know, the minute I get, Oh, remind me to do this later. Remind me to say, I mean, it's just, and then yeah. it's popping up all day long and, it, and it's a lifesaver for me, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, I'm the perfect I definitely player. use the reminders on, yeah. on the computer. Yeah. That's cool. Right on. So uh, if you've listened to the show before, you probably know we're big fans of uh, mistakes here, uh, probably because I've made so many in my life, but uh, really because they teach us so much. And if you could pick one thing out, one best, you know, and I'm making quotes in air here, best mistake that you've made uh, with one of your businesses that taught you the the most, what would you say that is? Uh, Wow. Yeah. I I make probably... 10 to a hundred mistakes a day. Uh, (laughs) But the most overarching thing I would say, what I, what I've learned from and try to uh, take from the most would be my biggest uh, failure within a company. And that's the reason I got out of the the hostel was because of a partnership breakdown. And there, you know, there's a lot of things that go into that. A lot my fault. I would still say a lot his fault, whatever. But what I've learned from that is self-reflection and observance and to see, you know, I was young at the time, 24, thought I knew what was going on. Yeah. But once I had time to step away and see how everything broke down and, and become empathetic to how my uh, actions and decisions led to reactions, uh, it, it was a, a big wake up call. And now, you know, I think I'm a, a much better business partner because of it for all the other ventures that I'm working on. And so I'd say, you know, the biggest mistake I made was uh, not realizing who I was or, or what I was doing day to day and how that was affecting other people within uh, the hostel and taking from that a way to reflect and observe and, and use that uh, to go forward for all the, the business ventures. Yeah. That I have oh, that's now. great, man. I mean, that, the, the ability to look back and to put yourself in that position where you're taking responsibility, f- you know, for six, because I, I, I've just found the people that, uh, point fingers or blame. They don't seem to be as successful. The, the folks that look back and go, "Ah, eh, you know, I realize I screwed up here, and this is what I caused, and this kind of thing." Uh, yeah. It took me a while, but yeah. once yeah. I, once I got it, I, I think that was probably the the largest single takeaway from a mistake. Great advice. Our, our yeah. egos are the things that hold us back the most. I mean, at times they are the things that drive us, right? And perhaps sometimes yeah. the only thing you've got. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's a double edged sword for sure. <laughs> Yeah, that's yep. cool. Yeah, yep. that's good. It's good advice. That's why I asked that question because I we always get good stuff out of it. So it, it looks like you're working on you know two main companies right now. Mm-hmm. Is, is your plan uh, going forward? You know, to focus on growing those two, or do you have other things in the works uh, as well? Oh uh, no, nothing else in the works now. Those two are uh, just really getting going. I mean, the shirt company we just did a test run basically because I never had any previous experience in apparel. So we ran out of most of those shirts. So we actually just have the second round waiting in customs right now. So I'm trying to get that out. Yeah. Uh, but the Ignite 360, which is our second uh, end-to-end marketing suite for small businesses, we secured a, a pretty big partnership with one of the biggest direct sales companies in the United States to do a test pilot. So that nice. starts in mid end of January. Um, so we've got Congrats. a lot going on with that's that. Great. So that's, yeah, that's uh, great. And is that, is, is the Ignite 360, uh, you know, kind of accumulation of the of things you've learned over the years, you and your partner that you've worked with for a long time and, and trying to help other companies from that? 
Uh, so this was, so Sean, my business partner lived in Australia, worked with a guy named Spiro. Spiro's a tech guy, had a company, uh, sold it, you know, made good money, smart dude. Uh, and he really created this and brought us on board. I see. So this is his, uh, baby and he got us on board. We did a test pilot in Australia, a proof of concept successful used all that money to build out the platform we have now. Uh, and then, you know, then we have been working with a pretty uh, different distribution model for a software as a service company where, you know, a lot of people just do uh, direct advertising online and, and we're going and using a direct sales company for having these sales reps go door to door to sell it, Great. which is, uh, pretty different i think um but yeah uh it's that it's, to answer your question accumulation of everything i've done no not really uh it's more i was uh lucky or you know kept hustling until i got involved in the right project and sure it's accumulation of that that's great and who's your target market for uh <clears throat> the ignite 360 products so really it's any company so what we do it's we have a few products reputation management uh social media management there's uh sms marketing um so our target would be any company smaller i would say two to four million in annual revenue that wouldn't have somebody on board that uh would handle these day-to-day tasks and so the platform is is meant to have the business owner or maybe just the the manager be able to handle these tasks in a much more time efficient manner. So, you know, it's, it, we're not going after big companies. It's sure. That's great. Businesses. Yeah. It sounds like a good, a good sweet spot. Yep. So uh, as we wrap things up here, you know, we, we've got thousands of small business owners that are listening to you right now. If you could offer your single best piece of advice uh, about running a small business, what, what would that be? Ooh, no, right. pre- no pressure. <laughs> Uh, I would say two part. Number one, don't stop learning. So listen to podcasts like this, read, uh, watch interviews, whatever you can to, to keep learning. You know, it doesn't even have to be industry specific. A lot of things transfer over ideas, techniques, whatever. And then also it, I, I think you know, a lot of business owners get pigeonholed into their day-to-day tasks because they're just trying to survive. So if they can take a step away, you know, so that they can try to identify opportunities or see missed opportunities or, or where they're having problems, or even better yet, have somebody else do it for you that you trust that's a smart business owner. Um, and then once you can identify your missed opportunities, your opportunities, your problems, your deficiencies, take what you've been learning because you're hopefully constantly learning and then you can apply it to hopefully grow and improve. Awesome. That's great. So what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about your companies? How do they find you? Uh, you know, I'd say my personal email address it would be, I'd be honored to have anybody reach out to me. I'd love to have a conversation. So J at Gmail, A N D E R L I T E J at gmail.com. Um, or you can find me on Facebook at Jeffrey R. Anderlight. Awesome. It's an inspiring story, man. And it sounds like you're just getting started. So uh, we'll definitely have you back and keep us posted uh, on things. And thank you again for sharing your, your story and coming on the show today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, guys. Yeah, such cool stuff, man. Thank you so much. This has been great. Yeah. Folks, you know where to find Jeff. You know where to find us. Businessshow.co. And... Uh, See you next time. Keep living that charmed life. Thanks again, Jeff.